Her life lessons had their roots in the patches and coal mines of West Virginia, where her coal miner father was born. She lived in Lemont Furnace, Pennsylvania, a coal mining town where the miners were picked up before dawn and returned at sundown. It was a place where health and safety were not a priority. Even today, it is a place where residents remain impoverished and challenged by unhealthy environmental conditions. She began caring about good folks who still hope to live the American dream, but still, like many Americans living in poverty, have lives shortened by significant burdens of disease and inequity in access to health care. It is in this patch, in a valley, in the Appalachian Mountains, where her caring about others began. That caring grew into a commitment to those without a voice, but worthy of a caring heart and healing hands. Margaret is the third of four children born to Wilbur and Beatrice Menace Larkins. Beatrice was 15 with an eighth grade education, and Wilbur was 22, a high school graduate and an enlisted Army Corpsman. She was born in Uniontown Hospital but lived in Lemon Furnace. She was raised there with her three siblings, Mary, Herbert, and Faith, until she was eight years of age. Lemon is a small coal mining town approximately 50 miles south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, surrounded by the rich Monongahela, Allegheny, and Yakagany rivers. Margaret's home was rich with faith, hope for a better life, dreams of a better world, continuous encouragement, and lessons of perseverance. She would need all of this support as her simple life as a country girl would change. She navigated her childhood through the height of the civil rights movement and the death of good people. She lived through the tragic losses of Martin, Malcolm, Robert, Jack, Medgar, Emmett Till, Cheney, Warner, Goodman, and the four little girls in the basement of a southern church. Mentorship and mentoring became a part of her life during middle school. From the school crossing guard, her close family and friends, civil rights champions, poets, and activists, these people entered her life during her journey in search for purpose. She listened to Marvin Gaye protest the war with song while neighborhood friends came home to be buried during Vietnam. She persevered with the same spirit of faith, hope, and encouragement that lived in her household. The culmination of these experiences made service the focus of her journey. Margaret became involved in local service projects that included everything from feeding the poor to raising money for a home for unwed mothers and speaking to incarcerated women to build their self-worth and hope. I've always wanted to be part of women's lives as far as empowering them. So I've worked in lower socioeconomic areas primarily in my entire life, um, trying to make sure that women were empowered to be the best that they could be. Looking at their wellness, totally. Looking at their psychological wellness, as well as their physical wellness, their spiritual wellness, their social wellness. Because of course I feel that women are the foundation of every home. And women make homes uh, the best they can, they can be if they're healthy. She has many heroes in her life that she has tried to honor through service. Her mother, Beatrice, who died tragically, was her inspiration to be a woman of integrity and to fight for both the civil and human rights of women. Her father, Wilbur, became the model of disparities in health care as he was never offered lifestyle choices or available medical intervention to prevent a massive heart attack after a clear cardiac diagnosis. His death was complicated by distrust ignorance, unconscious bias, lack of clinical competency, and a failed health care system that didn't respect the need for a diverse academic culture. Today, he would have received better health care, but would still struggle to receive the level of health care he needed. This reality would affect Margaret deeply and forever influence the direction of her work. As a nurse and nurse educator, she found comfort in the art of healing with her words and hands. The opportunity to work in many local socioeconomically deprived communities and many communities abroad solidified her purpose. Her years as a critical care nurse and a nurse in academia allowed her to care for our country's sickest and most disease burdened. Through it all, she continued to focus on service through education and at some point becoming a physician, a practicing OBGYN clinician, became the next logical step for Margaret to realize her potential, her passion, and her purpose. The decision to pursue a degree in medicine was a pivotal point in the lives of her entire family. As the wife of the vice president of enrollment management at Tuskegee University and a mother of three young children, her family had the opportunity to meet and engage with many of our trailblazers like Rosa Parks, Dick Gregory, and Desmond Tutu. 
Working at John A. Andrews Hospital made the history of the Tuskegee experiment a living reality. The day-to-day -day reflection of the disparities of health care greeted her as she was often visited by the deformed children of the men and women that experienced this tragedy. The difficult decision to pursue medicine meant that as a family, the Pettigrews would all be investing in the vision of one, and they did. Together they started and completed her medical school journey, a journey that would culminate with a role that would open more doors to initiatives that were focused on mentorship, leadership, and the education of underrepresented minorities. Military service was the route that made medical school a reality. Active duty found her serving her country during 9-11 and retained for service at the threat of war. She would later receive an honorable discharge at the rank of lieutenant commander from the Navy. Military service has been a family tradition and a part of her family legacy. Her father, brother, uncle, and son are all proud veterans. Military leadership and understanding the challenges of veterans have added to her sense of purpose. Upon her honorable discharge, international health care disparities and reproductive health education for women of color became her next mission. This would be the validation of her important work of service through education from Ghana Swaziland, Haiti, Malawi, and Latin America, to Pittsburgh, Los Angeles, Cleveland, and Tuskegee, Alabama, she has found service through education to be the key to saving and improving lives, a system that incorporates humanity, legacy, cultural competency, and clinical excellence, serves as a conduit for accessible and equitable health care. Her clinical work in HIV care for women and prevention of preterm childbirth deliveries has centered around health care and client literacy that results in compliance and longevity. I've been involved in global health for a long time and knowing that global health means, you know, both in my own backyard as well as abroad. And I think establishing sustainable programs that really reach out to women, really reach out to trainees to make them uh, establish programs that will go on and on. Uh, and I, I can't not talk about my program that I have in Guyana right now because that's a significant program that really speaks to sustainability, training specialty providers to really take care of their own people in their own population so that once I leave there, they'll have providers that are specialty trained. None of this would have been possible without the mentor and friend who entered her life during high school and stayed around for over 40 years, always encouraging, critiquing, and listening to her sometimes relentless whining. His name is Chennis Pettigrew Jr., and she often refers to him as Chen, her husband of 36 years. Together they have accepted the challenge of raising three African-American male children in the United States, protecting them, guiding them, and using every resource at their disposal. They call this part of their journey the making of heroes. Their living heroes are their children, Carlos, Chenis Reese, and Gaetan. These young men are creative and productive citizens that make it easy to dismiss stereotypes of young black men. Doctors Pettigrew have watched them navigate their lives with a calm, gentle spirit that has taught many humanity and humility. As a teacher, musician, and physician, they live their lives investing in the growth of others. They are indeed heroes to many, as they too are delivering service through education. The legacy continues as Margaret has welcomed the bright young minds of her three grandchildren into her fold. Corbin, Chase, and Carson are learning that service is part of the Pettigrew tradition. Dr. Pettigrew is responsible for sustainable changes that improve the lives of those who have been less fortunate than her. This has taken the form of clinical excellence, mentorship, and education. As a lifelong learner, she has continued to use education as a tool to enhance her skills as a clinician and a health policy strategist. Degrees in nursing, education, medicine, and international public policy have prepared her for this next exciting journey. As we change in a society, it's really important that we train the methods of teaching and we train, we, we train our young, bright men and women about the needs and changes that occur in our communities. And I think mentorship, being a role model, helping them understand the world around them, right here in Cleveland, then abroad, makes them a better provider. Narrowing the gap of health disparities through physician and patient literacy is the core of Dr. Pettigrew's chosen purpose. Clinical Excellence in Diversity and Inclusion, CEDI, is an ongoing effort that will result in an intentional and sustainable climate and behavioral change at university hospitals.